Yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back to another Hizzy lesson. Today we're looking at the Pharaoh. By the way, I'm just going to come out and like let you guys know. If you ever see me like poking my head around to try and see what's behind your screen, that's not it. Um, I've got my camera right here in front of me. The screen that I'm looking at, is, I can see what you guys see is over there, like just behind the camera. On the bottom corner are the controls so that I can see when I'm like, when it's recording and when I need to stop recording. So I have to like transition from the screen, this screen here that you guys are looking at, and then this screen here that shows me what you're looking at. Whole bunch of stuff that you don't care about and you probably don't need to know. But if you're wondering why I'm like poking my head around to see what the go is, that's why. So today we're looking at the Pharaoh, who the Pharaoh is, what the Pharaoh does. This lesson, we're going to focus on using our listening skills, our writing skills, even a little bit of our um, drawing skills. I'll give you guys a heads up. You all know this, your boy cannot draw. If your drawings are terrible, all good. I just want to see your best effort. My drawings are always terrible. I just want to see the best that you can do. So we're going to start with, where's my mouse? Here it is. Okay. So we're looking at, I'm also going to give you the heads up. I'm not Egyptian, like current Egyptian or ancient Egyptian. So I might be pronouncing some of these names wrong. You guys might have your own way of pronouncing some of the names. If that's the case, fill me in. Let me know what your way is. I'll do my best to keep some people happy. Okay, so we're starting with our reading over here. <clears throat> Legend has it that Menes, a king of Upper Egypt, united the Lower and Upper Egypt about 5,000 years... Yes, about 5,000 years ago. Sorry, my brain did a bit of math. I'm like, 5,000 doesn't seem too far as far enough back but we're not as ancient as the dinosaurs so we're going to start again because remember 5,000 years 5,000 minus 2020 gives us about 2,080 years roughly if my maths my maths might be wrong use a calculator for that one <laughs> use your working out a right, legend has it that men is a king of upper Egypt united lower and upper Egypt about 5,000 years ago and established a new capital city at Memphis. In reality, the unification or the two lands coming together, the coming together of the two lands may have taken place through the efforts of different kings over a 200 year period. The ruler of the two lands wore a new double crown that combined the red crown of Lower Egypt with the white crown of Upper Egypt. People use the word Pharaoh, meaning great house, because it was considered disrespectful to address their leader by his own name. The Pharaoh was so powerful that he alone decided what was the law, and his people believed he could make laws for the entire universe. The Pharaoh was the main landowner in Egypt, and he demanded heavy taxes in the form of goods from those wealthy Egyptians whom he allowed to own land. So this paragraph is telling us that the Pharaoh was called the Pharaoh because they considered it rude to call him by his own name. And when we look at different cultures, that carries down a little bit in some cultures today. I know in the, um, in the Arabic cultures, so I myself call any male that's older than me uncle and any lady that's older than me auntie. They might not be my actual uncle or auntie, but it's done out of respect. But I'm not going to go so far as to call them Pharaoh. <laughs> and the Pharaoh made the laws for all of Egypt. What the Pharaoh said went. And the Pharaoh owned really all of Egypt. And he got taxes from the people who he gave land to. So remember we were looking at last lesson. That there were the nobles that owned the land. That was because the Pharaoh gave it to them. And they then would pay the Pharaoh back. At different times, people viewed the Pharaoh as a god, as their protector and as the le their leader in battle. People believed he was descended from Ra, so he was brought down. He was like a child of Ra, the sun god, and he was inhabited by the spirit of the god Horus. What that means is that they believe that inside of the Pharaoh was the spirit of Horus, another one of their gods. As a result, the Pharaoh had many duties to fulfill. His people expected him to make sure that the Nile flooded as required, 
there was enough food for people to eat. The gods looked kindly on the people. Egypt's army could defend itself against any enemies. And the truth, or mat, was at the heart of Egyptian life. Now let's have a quick look and see what out of all of these things could the Pharaoh really have done. So remembering that he was a man, could he make the Nile flood? Not really. Could he make sure there was enough food for people to eat? Maybe if he helped with separating all of the food for people. But he couldn't make the food grow. But remember, they believed that he was a god. That the gods looked kindly on the people. So this would come in, the Pharaoh making sure that everyone offered up the sacrifices to the gods. That Egypt's army could defend itself against any enemies. Maybe if he was a really good general. Or that the truth or mart was at the heart of Egyptian life. So here we have a breakdown of some of the different... Well, here's a pharaoh. And here we have some of the things that the pharaoh is wearing. I might grab my pen for this one. Please don't open anything up. Computer. Uh, yep, my computer. Other computer did a thing. All right, so bear with me. I might try and draw on the screen to like bring your attention to certain things. So over here on the pharaoh's headdress, we can see the golden cobra. Can you guys see my little marker there? You can see the gold... The golden cobra up here. If I rub that out, will it go? Yes, perfect. And here we have the double crown. When we look at the double crown, let's have a separate look over here. So figure B is showing us the white crown, which was a symbol of power over Upper Egypt. And over here we have the red crown, which was the symbol of power over Lower Egypt. And then when you put them, put the two of them together, so this crown fits inside that crown. It forms the double crown, which is it shows that the pharaoh, sorry, it shows the double crown over here, which shows that the pharaoh has power over both the upper and lower Egypt. You might have noticed that I said upper and then lower, because when we look at what is upper and lower Egypt on a map, it was actually flipped. It's not upper and lower according to the way we view the world. Now let's have a look at some of the other headdresses that the um, pharaoh has. So this over here is the nemes, which is a soft headcloth and is usually made out of linen. And linen is like a very soft, breathable fabric. Over here we have the kepresh, which is a blue war crown worn when the Egyptian pharaoh went to war as the head of the army. And it was used from the 18th dynasty onwards. So these are some of the different hats that the pharaoh would wear. Now if we look at this image over here, we're, so we're back on this side, over here is the double crown to show that the pharaoh is in charge of upper and lower Egypt, with the cobra on the front. Here we can see the false beard that the pharaoh has. And we remember that one of the jobs within the Egyptian society was to create wigs and beards. Thankfully, I can still grow my own, so I don't know why your boy Pharaoh couldn't, but it is what it is. <laughs> Here we have a flail. The flail is used as a bit of a whip. And it wasn't, the Pharaoh didn't always whip people himself, but it was, he held it to show that he had the power to, that he was in charge of all of the servants. And here we have a crook. The crook is used to symbolize that he can tell people what to do. So a crook is something that a lot of um, sheep owners use, and they use it to control the sheep. And the crook is used here to show his control over the people. And hanging down here, we can see the pharaoh has a little bit of a bull's tail to show his power and strength. So I'm going to ask you guys to copy this paragraph below into your workbooks. Write your answers in. I really want you to pause the video. So I'd like to go through the answers, but I also know that some of you guys are just going to wait until I say it and not write it down. The Pharaoh wore a double crown. It combined the something crown of Lower Egypt and the something crown of Upper Egypt. We might be looking at what colors match the different areas. The word Pharaoh means something something. It was considered something to call the Pharaoh by his or her real name. People believed 
that Pharaoh was descended from something, the something God. And what five things did the people expect the Pharaoh to do? So copy all of this out with the answers. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Um, Where's my undo button? These three questions, question and answer in your workbooks. Let's go. Now, once you're finished that, Okay, so this is asking you guys to color and I'm not going to ask you guys to color on your computer. It's a bit difficult. What I want you guys to do, I want you to try and draw this in your workbooks. I know that it has a lot of detail in it. So if yours doesn't have all that, all the same detail, it's okay. To show you that I really don't mind if you aren't the most amazing illustrator, I'm going to show you how terrible I am. Okay, so got a bit of a head with is popping out and here we've got the beard Okay, this is actually a... I am worse than I remember. <laughs> yes, that does look... Oh, you can't see that. Um, So I am almost definite that whatever you guys draw is going to be better than this. So when you guys to draw this, draw this, not this. So this picture shows the Nemes. I want you guys to, ah, oh, I'm on the wrong screen. There we go. I want you guys to do a little bit of a Google search. Type ancient Egypt Nemes and then tell me what the Nemes is. This is the double crown. Hopefully this one's a little bit easier to draw. That was meant to loop and it didn't. There you go. If yours is worse than that, then team up. Bad illustrator squad. <laughs> this is a double crown and I want you to tell me what the double crown is, what it represents. This is the Kepresh. I'm going to give you a hint that this is blue. I'm going to clear that so that you guys can have a proper look at it. And again, same deal. I want you to tell me. Oh, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> I, I told you I can't draw. And if you, you guys, I guarantee you're going to have it so much better of a uh, drawing than I will. Than I have. So this is the Capresh. I want you to draw it and tell me what it is and what it represents. We're going to cut that there. I'm going to, where are we? About 13 minutes. I'm going to go have a bit of a cry over how bad my illust uh, illustrations are. I'm going to move back up. I'm going to leave the screen on each one of these images for a little bit. So if you need to hit the pause button so that you can have a look at it, you can hold it to where you need it. Go right ahead. And if you just want to use this time to uh, look at my amazing illustration, go right ahead. So this is the double crown. If you need to pause it on the double crown, do so now. And this is the Capresh. I'm still embarrassed to say how bad that is. Why am I trying to fix it? It's terrible. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. We're done. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching. Um, so I hope you guys found this lesson helpful. If you have any questions, email me, put your stuff up on the Google Classroom. When you've completed your work, take a photo of your work, upload that to the Google Classroom so that I can check it, I can see that you guys have done it. In any case, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Now here's the part where I look past the camera to see where the stop recording button is and it's right there. Thank you. Bye everybody.